hello. I thought I would go into a couple of things here today. I wanted to I wanted to break down how my Celtic cross works. I have other YouTubes on that. I want to show a diagram here of it. And the reason I want to do this is I also want to go into positional influence. Positional influence is something, the term I created. It's in my book, Bare Bones Tarot. And as far as I know, I'm it's the only work out there is on this that I that I've seen anyway, on how a card's meaning can shift based on what position it's placed in in the card spread. And I call that positional influence. And this this is um, examples of that would be if you have a card that represents change, let's say the five of swords, is um is it something that you need to do? Change? It's, it's, uh, um, is this something that is an asset you have that you've already done? Is this thing, something you need to watch for? Maybe it's going to be an obstacle. Depending on the position it's placed into, it's going to depend on how you define that change in a way that's going to be helpful to you. So it all depends on where it's placed and how that card's interpreted. And that's what I call compositional influence. And what I did with Bare Bones Tarot is I've taken each card and I've shown a meaning on how it would change if it's every in every position of the Celtic cross. So there's 10 positions of the cross. You take the, the temperance card and I show how it changes, how it shifts in meaning depending on the position of the Celtic cross is placed in food. So, so um, it gives you an idea of how that card, the range of that card, and how it can, how its meaning can shift depending on where it's placed. And those meanings, those shifts can be very big depending on where it's placed. Is it something you already have or something you need to do? Something you need to watch for? And other ways of looking at it. So positional influence is the term I came up with because I think that this has value in your readings. And I'm also going to go over my cross and show how I, how I lay it out and um, how I think it could be useful for your clients. So we'll get started here. These are the positions that I put together over time with a cross and they were based on the way I just was as I was reading I realized that these ideas would be more beneficial than the ones that were in a, a traditional or a conventional Celtic cross and my reading has improved because of it now this will not spark any more intuition into your readings it won't take any away though either I do say that in my other YouTubes and in my work, I do say that the more you read tarot cards, the more you'll develop your intuition. Because you're using that side of the mind. And the more you use it, the better you're going to get at it. But a reading doesn't have to be all intuitive. Um... If there's a little bit of intuition in a reading, it can go a long way. So anyway, my my four my my ten positions of the cross numbers one and two positions here. The way I do the cross, I see numbers one and two working together. These two cards working together like a small mini two card spread to have us get a, a another look at the question itself, what we're really looking at here. This allows us to take a close look at the question and go over it with the client. And it's a good um, a good way to get things rolling, get them talking about it as you interpret these two cards to their question. Also gives us opportunity to um, maybe rephrase the question, look at it in a more clearer way so it has a lot of benefits those two positions right there 
of, the, of taking a look at a hard look at the question we're looking at. What is it we're talking about here? The number three position, what actions the client is currently taking and are they the best actions to take? Right now, with the number three position allows us to look at the things that are being done right now by the client. And could those be improved? Could be doing something better. Something to make more chance of success if they handled this a little differently. The number four position, what the client's immediate goals are from the actions taken from position three. So they're doing some immediate actions in position three to accomplish something in position four. So maybe the goals are doing, maybe the things they're doing in position three won't get them position four. Or at least there might be better ways to do that. It allows us also to look at position four as, is this really what the client wants to do right now? Is this really what the client wants? This immediate goal? Or is there, is there a better goal? Or can that goal be fine-tuned in some way? Adjusted? Position five is an asset the client has it that, that they, they should use. It would be helpful for them to achieve this goal. This allows the reader to find something about the client that maybe they're not really aware of or they're, they're not using that would be beneficial for them if they did. This might be a position they're in right now, an influence they have, a talent they have. Maybe they're not using this, and they should. Position six in my cross is an opportunity to come the client needs to be needs to watch for. This is a this is a a, posi a position that's kind of a prediction position that um, shows that what's coming. An opportunity they got they got they should watch for. If you hit on that, and the client realizes they need to watch for this, it opens their eyes for it. They're they're watching for it now. Or if they didn't know about this, it might just go right by them on a past opportunity that they they never really realized they even had. So something that'll help them accomplish their goal in position six. An opportunity. This could be a person, could be a thing, something they acquire, something they realize, some new information they got, whatever. Something changes that puts them in a better position. Position seven, the client's viewpoint of their own question. Is it correct? This allows us to take that position seven and put it with positions one and two and a hard look at the question and how the client is seeing their own question. Maybe they're not seeing things exactly the way they really are. This allows us to question the client's view of how they're seeing their question. It also allows us to open things up with a client because lots of times the clients will give you their viewpoint of the question and lots of times that could be a one-sided viewpoint it allows us to open things up and maybe let the client bring things out in some way to us we can draw things out of them that they didn't tell us originally when they sat down position seven Position eight, I call timing. And it, it might be a better way to call that. I'm not too sure what, but I, timing to me, a lot of people think I'm talking about date or time. <laughs> Makes sense. Really what we're doing, looking at there is, is are things in place right now to, to act on this? And if they're not in place, what needs to be in place? Maybe you need to wait for that opportunity in position six to come around before you act or maybe you need to focus on your talent that you have in position five and refine that and get that working and get that moving before you act when to act could be very important 
And it's that position eight. But tell us, maybe we need to adjust positions three and four in a different way before we move forward here. Take a, a better look from position seven, the way we're seeing our own question before we move forward. I don't know what we're talking about here. What are we really getting into? So the timing, when to act, what needs to be in place before we act? And that's really what I mean by that. Position nine is the purpose of this whole thing. Whatever they're doing, trying to accomplish in position four and the actions they're taking in position three to get there, is this really going to give them position nine, whatever that is? So it's a deep look. And what are we really, why are we, why do we, what do we think we're going to get out of this? What do we really ultimately want? Is this goal we're going into right now going to give us that? Why do we think it, it will? The whole purpose of this, it's a, it's a deep look at the question itself. And is what you think you have in front of you right now really going to give you that? Or are you seeing things in a way that maybe, maybe you're barking up a wrong tree here? And position 10, lots of times that's looked at as final outcome. I don't look at it as that. I, I have here a, a prediction based on the actions to be taken. Also, finer details of things to watch for, good and bad. So finer details, things could come up, curveballs could be thrown in here, surprises, unexpected things could happen. And it's good to prepare for that. Watch for a disruption. Watch for another opportunity from position six. Maybe you have another opportunity coming too. Maybe something will happen here that's going to throw a monkey wrench into things or really become an asset to you. Maybe you'll see results that are going to really make, make you feel encouraged about this as you move forward. And, that, and seeing that in position 10 will show you you're on the right track. So what to watch for, good and bad? Position 10. A prediction on what will happen. Will you be happy with this? Will you get it? If we move in the right directions, if we make the right choices based on the reading, is this going to get you what you really want in position 9? Be careful, you might get what you wish for. <laughs> So that's my Celtic cross. You could print out a dummy of this cross layout without the words in it. If you like to play on my website, tarotmaps.com, go to the downloads page and you could download um, eight by 10 copies of this cross. The diagram allows you to record readings, put your own, you could write the cards in each position that came up in a, in a card reading you did and put some notes on the side. So that comes in handy to have. Celtic cross. And like I said, positional influence really makes a difference. You have a card laid in any one of these positions. It will change the way it's looked at depending on the position it's placed into. The meaning shifts in some way. It's given new meaning. And lots of times it could be in a very uh, dynamic type of a change. So where the card is placed is important. Positions of a card spread are the question itself. The card is the answer. So the card has to fit as an answer based on the position it's placed with. And it's nice to know that and see that, how that can be, how, how those shifts can happen, and understand that. Gives you a, a range the card can have then. It shows you how the card can be used in various aspects of a question. Our next tarot meeting is the 22nd of November, 12 o'clock Chicago time, noon. And you can get a link there and the tarot, go to the tarot gatherings in the in the menu on tarotmaps.com and just walk in. It's a free get-together. All are welcome. If you got any questions about the tarot, 
come on in, say hi, and um, take it from there. Thanks for watching. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon. <laughs>